Hello. This presentation examines Arctic data systems and their relationship with the Roadmap for Arctic Observing and Data Systems, or ROADS process. The ROADS process was described in more detail in a previous presentation at this conference by Starkweather and Larson on September 24, 1630. The Arctic data community is pursuing activities to improve data acquisition, access, and management for a wide range of stakeholders concerned with science, operations, policy, and local and indigenous interests. The diverse requirements of these groups is further complicated by a fragmented funding situation that often results in gaps and duplication across programs. The complex suite of organizations involved in Arctic data has been described as an example of polycentric governance, where many centers of authority interact to pursue a common governance goal with varying levels of success. The situation at the technical level is not dissimilar, with terms such as system of systems and ecosystems used to describe the interaction of diverse Arctic data system components. The components of an end-to-end -end data system include user requirements, data generation, data resources, data platforms, data exploitation, and user decisions. Significant progress has been made in many aspects of the design and implementation of Arctic data systems, but there is still much to be done. Here's the situation in four areas. First, data interoperability and standards. Interoperability is about the ability to collaborate and understand each other. Today, we live in a fragmented world. There is some interoperability at the discovery level and limited interoperability at the data level. While there is no lack of standards, application of those standards is lacking. Second, data discovery and semantics. The goal is a data and information ecosystem that makes all relevant knowledge, information, and data easily accessible and usable by a diverse set of users. Today, we have a complex, diverse, socio-technical polar data ecosystem with siloed solution development, limited expertise and capacity, a paucity of appropriate tools, and a lack of shared semantics. Third, data platforms. Today, we have increasing quantities of data, increasing user expect expectations for efficiency and ease of use, and the need to support diverse user skill levels. While data interoperability has been largely achieved, processing interoperability is in development. And this is important to achieve the ideal of processing data where it is stored. Also, platform proliferation is becoming a problem. Beyond duplication of effort, it is causing confusion among users. Fourth and finally, funding. The funding situation is diverse, with many participants at all levels, national and international. Projects and funding need to be better coordinated, especially internationally, and project-based funding is a challenge for the continuity of initiatives. The need for funding coordination was identified at the second Arctic Science Ministerial, and a working group was created to address the situation. Preparatory project funding, so-called seed money, is needed for preparatory work and to ensure the participation of stakeholders, collaboration across disciplines, and international initiatives. A recent workshop considered current challenges that need to be addressed for Arctic data systems. These are listed here. They include improving coordination among funders, ensuring long-term support for data management and curation, engaging with and enhancing existing activities rather than creating new initiatives, involving and respecting the perspectives of Indigenous peoples in data collection and management, and embracing cloud platforms and new analytical techniques, such as artificial intelligence. The SEON Roadmap for Arctic Observing and Data Systems, or ROADS, has been developed to help manage the complexity of the Arctic data situation. It sets out a multi-phase process and governance structure for defining shared Arctic variables that will provide benefits across a wide range of stakeholders and scales. However, the focus so far has been on observing systems, and work remains to define the underlying data systems. 
The road's guiding principles that have evolved for Arctic observing systems also apply to Arctic data systems. Elements of those principles include Indigenous Peoples' Equitable Partnership and funding for their active participation, broadly shared benefits from observing and data systems, integrated planning approaches among existing networks, activities, and projects, and stepwise development through a flexible and evolving structure that allows grassroots identification of foci. There is still much to be done to move towards an enhanced model for Arctic data management. And by working together, we believe the Arctic community can achieve significant improvements in Arctic data and system interoperability and functionality. However, making significant progress will require adequate financial, technical, and human resources. The roads, principles, processes, and bodies can assist in that journey by establishing data system expert panels to communicate, engage, advise, coordinate, and review Arctic data system requirements, policy, programs, and initiatives across international, regional, national, and local levels to represent Indigenous, scientific, operational, and citizen views that will ensure system efficiency, effectiveness, and impact for society, the environment, safety, knowledge, and the economy.